Today we're diving into a simple, multi-step process to give your 3D printer the deep clean it deserves. So to get started, we need a microfiber cloth which is lint free and also clean followed by isopropyl alcohol 70% or higher is ideal. We also need compressed gas or compressed air that we'll use to clean certain key components followed by grease. This is normally supplied by Bamboo Lab or you can get off the shelf grease which is certified or ideal for our printers. Next we will need a tool which is known as an allen key this is also supplied in our kits and this is two millimeter it's pretty long and i prefer this because it gets me into tight spots compared to this short one uh, which is somewhat difficult to use next i would want to remove any filament that i have which is on the machine and this is so that i have access to the rear of the machine which i will show you later in the video i will then boom the device and this is so that i have access or free range of motion to the heat bed and also the extruder assembly so that i can clean my rods and other components later in this, in this video here i'm just showing you how to get to the different sections that you can control the hotbed or to control the extruder so we have our part cooling fans and i tend to clean this area first simply because i want to eliminate dust within my space so it doesn't contaminate other areas the extruder assembly also has a fan that we have to clean and we use our compressed air to do just that. There are other key components of the extruder head that we need to clean and I will show you this part that you just go through thoroughly just to remove any buildup of dust. The yellow gear also has dust buildup and you want to go in with the air just to have it cleaned. Now that we have cleaned that section, we now move on to the filament cutter. It's important that we inspect this thoroughly. It is responsible for cutting the filament during each filament swap. To inspect or to remove, you just remove a nut. It is, has a, a spring tensioner. You just move it back and then you're able to inspect the filament cutter just to determine whether it is good or not. To replace, just simply slide out and put right back in and then do everything in reverse. The hot end silicone sock is also a critical component. It um, is responsible for protecting the hot end and also regulating the temperature so to speak um, you want to make sure that you slide it off and look for any visible cracks or wear and tear and if there's any visible defects then you want to have that replaced now that we have worked on the head we want to now move on to our nozzle wiper now this is very small and it is in a very tight spot it is something that you know you can you could easily overlook however it's very important because it wipes away any excess filament which is on the hot end to inspect you just remove look for any damaged areas if there is none then you can reuse if then if you need to replace it then you can do so by removing one screw Now, because these machines emit fumes and dust particles, you want to make sure that you check your charcoal filter frequently, change when needed. I recommend if you use these frequently, then you know changing once per month is, is not excessive. All 
all right next step we are going to use our isopropyl alcohol so that we can use to clean our carbon rods now these rods don't require any grease in fact no grease should be actually put on these rods homing the device actually gives us the ability to move the extruder head in multiple positions so that we have access to the carbon rods for cleaning it's very important that you check these rods on a frequent basis especially if you print frequently or print certain type of materials that tend to generate more dust than usual the next thing we want to look at is our y and z axis linear rods now these rods are very important there are multiple rods contained within you just want to make sure that you remove all dust using your alcohol to do so or just a microfiber cloth just to make sure that you get rid of any dust all right so we just want to apply some grease a very thin layer of grease try not to get any on those pulley straps which i did so try not to make the same mistake as i did however if that should should happen you just want to go in and remove the grease as as best as you possibly can those those pulley straps should not have any grease so it's important that you remove any form of grease in the event that it should come in contact with seam now i'm just applying just some extra grease just to make sure it is well lubricated and protected and the grease is basically to allow smooth movement and also to protect it from actual rust All right, so now we move on to our z-axis lead screws these tend to really work a lot and they do generate quite a, a bit of dust over time depending on frequency of use we want to make sure that we move our bed up and down so that we get every part of these screws cleaned thoroughly so that we can apply grease to this later which i will show you in the video there is three in total two at the front one left one right and one which is in the rear and i will show you by removing the back section um, later as you can see our microfiber cloth is pretty dirty at this point but it's important to take your time to remove all the dust particles from those rods or screws also note that in the interest of time my rods were also clean and i will grease later in this video as well all right so let's move on to the back section which i notice a number of videos that don't emphasize on removing the back section which gives you access to our rod and the lead screw which is hidden I believe that to give this a thorough and proper cleaning, you need to remove the back section so that you have access. And while at the back section, you just want to give everything a real nice good clean. You have the exhaust fan, you have the poop chute, you have all the electrical components. While doing so, you're, you know, after homing your device, you're able to actually move the bed up and down, giving you access to the rod and also the lead screw then you can actually do good thorough cleaning within this space
now it would be very good if you could use your compress air to get into some really tight spots so that you can remove additional dust or dirt buildup so that when you actually close up your machine you're confident you are confident that you have a machine which is well maintained and well clean I mean this might be a little bit excessive but you know I have extra so why not So after cleaning your rod and your lead screw, you want to add a generous amount of grease uh, to these two components so that you can have them lubricated. Once again, you will move your bed up and down so that you actually spread the grease evenly throughout and if there is any excess you can wipe that easily away. Now I service my machines very frequently so you know in some other videos you might see people add grease twice but I tend to do just one simple because I tend to clean my machines at least every month so that I extend the life and uh, preserve the print quality of my machines. At this point, we will turn our attention to our rod. Um, we're just ensuring that it is cleaned thoroughly, and uh, we'll follow the same process by, you know, adding grease to the rod, moving the bed up and down so that the oil is spread efficiently. So at this point we turn our attention to the rod and also the lead screw where we apply using the same process a thin layer of grease to both rods and to our lead screw and then we move our bed up and down so that the oil is spread efficiently. Even though it's not necessarily covered in this video but the rods were cleaned and greased thoroughly prior so hence why it was not shown. Bling, bling. We just want to go in and just give a, a final cleaning of our machine just to make sure that we remove any residual dust or dirt which is contained within so that we can you know have a clean machine After every cleaning of your machine, it is recommended that you calibrate your machine so that you maintain 
accuracy of your prints and full function of your machine. If you have made it to the end of this video, I hope it was of great value and I hope you have learned something and if you did, I would just encourage you to subscribe. Um, these videos, they do take a lot to actually make but if there's something that you enjoy, um, I would just encourage you to subscribe. You know, it keeps us going and it is something that I would really appreciate and it's actually free. With that being said, I'd just like to say, Thank you very much for watching and um, I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Peace.